Добрый день, уважаемые. Good afternoon, colleagues. I think we have the most resilient part of our audience still with us because it's the second day in a row that we're having these discussions. I hope we have a very fruitful exchange. I hope we'll uh, discuss this important question. Which project really transforms cities? Which project have major impact on life and cities and their development? Talking about Moscow, I would like to highlight a number of challenges and development priorities, challenges we faced as our team first came to power back in 2011. Our mayor set forth a number of goals to fight congestion, create points of growth and achieve polycentric development and to find balance in construction, where to build, how to build and what to build. These were our three priorities in 2011. As we worked on these priorities, we changed our approaches largely thanks to this urban forum that's happening for the ninth time thanks to our participants and that share their experience and best practices share global experience talk about their achievements and mistakes that help us understand better what we should be doing and how so we've identified based on all that a number of projects to transform Moscow quickly and change attitude towards people and make the city more comfortable for people. There are three major groups of projects, lines of work I want to talk about. First is transport infrastructure that includes MDC, MCC, large circle and new metro lines. All that has to do with rail transport. Second would be roads and artificial structures. Third would be transportation hubs. We neglected them at first, then as we began, we figured out it was very complicated. And last year only, I can tell you, we started achieving some progress. We built our first transportation hubs. We started designing them. By the way, thanks to Nikkei CK's support, Nikkei CK's support, then we started working on Moscow River embankments. We thought of them not just as transportation thing, but also as places for recreation and potential points of growth where we could build additional bridges, pedestrian bridges, and rethink River's role in the city context. The second line of work for us would be real estate and construction improving housing quality in the city. That includes infrastructure, buildings. So we summarize them under real estate and construction. Housing stock renovation program is our flagship program. Our approach differed as compared to two years ago when it was first introduced, because now we understand that renovating housing stock in itself is not enough, because that will trigger change in our approach to transport system, parking system, social infrastructure, and so on and so forth. And what's very important, renovation of all the engineering grids that were also constructed decades ago. The renovation also triggered and became a strong engine for the development of additional cultural, educational facilities. We looked at healthcare and we figured out we needed to build larger hospitals and outpatient hospitals in districts and that resulted in yet another mega project and then the Football World Cup gave us a push. We started focusing on sports, sports infrastructure, healthy lifestyle and this year for the first time we did an urban a, pro, a panel discussion on urban health making cities more healthy through urban development. Another line of work would be development projects that lay foundation for further development of Moscow in terms of tax revenues, um, redevelopment of industrial areas, uh, focusing on new Moscow where over a million people should live and work. We're redeveloping our industrial areas back in 2011 with lacked legal framework, but now this has been dealt with and we're working on it actively now and now there's this mega project that's in the pipeline we just started working on it this year 
under direct supervision of our mayor, my district program, that is. And I invite you to visit Manier, our exhibition in Manier, where we presented city development projects as well as uh, Gastine Dwar venue where we introduce all these projects because the programs, the 10 I spoke about just now, who have direct implications on people's lives. I will very briefly sp speak about these programs because as we work on large mega programs, we had to split them into separate elements that are also very big. If we talk about transportation, we're ready for a breakthrough. Not just ready, we're making it happen. We understand that by 2023, Moscow transportation system will have thousands of kilometers of rail transport, will unite subway and railroads that will consist of Moscow diameters, as we call them. We implement this project together with Moscow Railroad, contained with Moscow Central Circle of Subway, 400,000 passengers every year, large circle line of Moscow Subway, 70 kilometers is the total length, 31 stations, 35% have already been constructed and put into operation. We've built 50 kilometers of tunnels, and by 2023, we'll finish the circle. We also have four new highways, no, pardon, five new lines, and we're expanding four new ones. By the year 2023, 290 kilometers will be built, 126 stations will be completed. The next uh, cluster of issues would be automotive roads. We've built about 800 kilometers of roads, 350 engineering structures, and every third junction or uh, raised elevated road in, in, in Moscow has been built in the last eight years. And what we've designed right now, we know that 500 more kilometers of the roads and about uh, 250 artificial structures have to be built in the years to come. And we've started uh, implementing a united mega project, which is a building like three um, linking roads and one lateral roads. As you can see that the in solid color, what has been completed, uh, the dotted lines are uh, showing for what is uh, nearing the completion. We are designing and we are building. So we've also uh, deployed this project uh, confident that we will make it. And like I said, it's uh, transportation interchange hubs. Transport hubs is the most difficult project, but now 35 of such uh, uh, interchange hubs have been completed. Uh, seven more are in design stage. Now, embankment of the Moscow River. We have adopted a decision that all 200 kilometers of the Moscow embankments will be will be improved or redesigned. Speaking about the renovation project, two years ago, having began this uh, program, the program which gives people a chance to move to new apartments within 15 years, um, 12,000 people have been relocated and about 5 million square meters have uh, been implemented. Social facilities, we always keep them in the focus of our attention, but pre previously we just built uh, on the as-needed basis. Now very systemic as a part of my uh, district program, we are planning and building new schools, new daycare centers, new hospitals to make sure that all uh, the districts 142 in Moscow will have better amenities. We are very proactively now, for example, this is the school which will be commissioned in September with a capacity of 2,500 students in the Zeal district of Moscow. Next slide, please. And uh, one, the next one, please. Also, we're continuing to implement in the healthcare projects, and these are the healthcare projects and the big ones, major ones, uh, mega hospitals, also very small outpatient uh, clinics in each community, in each uh, neighborhood of our city. On top of that, you can see this is the new hospital in Komunarka uh, district. We began building it two years ago, and this year for the new, uh, Greater Moscow uh, residents, we are delivering it. A year later, another 80,000 square meters will be delivered. This will be the biggest hospital built in the last 30 years in Russia. 
we continue operations uh, on the uh, medical clusters. Next one, uh, sporting clusters. Now we have uh, five major sport clusters. Uh, one would be Luzhniki on your left, um, Vorobyova Hills, where we've had uh, the FIFA World Cup. And now we continue. And we've delivered two weeks ago the Center for um, Artistic Gymnastics. And uh, we continue all the Muscovites to to visit the Aquatic Sports uh, Center. It's a huge facility. And basically, all the territories where we've had some stadiums built for the FIFA World Cup, we are adding infrastructure. Here on the screen, you can see all the mega projects. Three years ago, myself and the mayor of Damascus had attended the sport complex in the Severny. Uh, settlements. To give you an example that we do not only work for elite sport but also on the outskirts, 25,000 square meters mixed use complex will be delivered in the northern part of the city. And this is the center for the artistic gymnastics in Luzhniki. And we are proactively developing uh, Greater Moscow or the new Moscow extension. We um, um, we are engaging in the redeveloping industrial territories all in all in Moscow. Today we have 50 major industrial zones, former industrial zones. And in the last eight years, uh, in these uh, industrial zones territories, we have uh, opened 50,000 new jobs. So the project is very effective. And we continue uh, to evolve. For example, we've had a city projects which we thought was not the best one because it was lacking transportation component. Now we uh, sort out all the issues related to transportation. We continue the territory of the bigger um, city center. We have approved with the mayor this concept of developing along the embankments of the Moscow River. It's a quite a big city of the Zeal former industrial zones. We're building residential building right now. And now we are planning to launch the biggest uh, under roof uh, children's theme park in in Europe. It's 90% uh, complete, and it's also an example of the integrated development approach for the former industrial zones in the city and many others. Uh, and the most important thing I would like to say that 146 districts of Moscow are now uh, building their own development master plans, master plans from the big mega projects all the way down to the micro and the smallest you know, projects and issues that residents are thinking and concerned about. In some cases, you have to build uh, new bus stops. In some cases, it's uh, increasing the green area or plant flowers or to plant new trees. And now 146 districts in Moscow every week uh, in our um, weekly meetings with the mayor of Moscow, we are spending hours thinking about these future master plans. And this is one example of how we uh, moved away from the global mega projects. We uh, trickled down to each resident, to all the uh, small, you know, districts and, and neighborhoods. And thanks to this work, the attitude of the Moscovites uh, to the uh, Moscow government is better. People have a better attitude. People really liked that their opinion, their voice is heard, and their opinion is taken into account. Uh, because sometimes the issues are controversial. Sometimes uh, you cannot meet everybody's demand. But the fact that we have a dialogue and active communication gives uh, people or gives us the high probability of success to make sure that the city will be comfortable. Thank you for your attention. Dear friends, we uh, continue our discussion. We are speaking about the projects which uh, change in the face uh, and perception of the city, projects which uh, change Moscow, mega projects and large scale projects which create a totally new quality of uh, urban environment you and I are living in. And what Marat has mentioned in his presentation of how the um, connectivity or a link between the mega projects and all 146 districts of Moscow, where we are beginning to think about the micro level, about each resident. I think it's a key element. It's a key to all. Only then it will become uh, sustainable in a life and not simply just, you know, very abstract mega projects which people have no relation to. We have many uh, panelists today with us, uh, but I think we'll make it on time. We'll uh, try to keep the schedule. And each of the panelists has their own unique experience. And I would like to share with us this experience. And uh, we are going to take a look at the key moments related to implementing this kind of mega projects. But before we begin, I would like to give a chance to each of our panelists for about 20 or 30 seconds to share about uh, their own impressions, impressions uh, of Moscow. 
Uh, the Deputy Mayor, Marat uh, Shakizanovich, uh, showed us very big things. Uh, they are not only on paper. They are already a reality. And I think uh, you have your own perception about Moscow. So please uh, share um, what do you think of Moscow. Maybe it's maybe one image, one thing that stands out for you. And um, uh, Robert, Robert Sarvero, maybe your impressions first, and then we will uh, move along. You, um, I, I have to say, I've only seen Moscow from the core of the city. I was last here 30 years ago. Uh, so what I have seen, I've been most impressed by um, just a great public realm, a lot of great public spaces and pedestrian facilities. Um, the, the thing I'm impressed by the presentation we've heard is the incredible degree of connectivity uh, that Moscow's metro network and motorway network and pedestrian way network. I've never seen a metropolis at the scale to have the level of interconnectivity that has been built and is planned to be built over the next uh, five years. So I'm very impressed. Thank you. May I say just one thing to all the speakers? If you have anything to correct, if something you do not like in Moscow, please also let us know. Let us know what we have to improve, because we want to uh, hear your critical feedback as well. And at the end, we decided that each of you will say what you want, to, <laughs> what you want us to make better in Moscow. Yeah, go ahead. Speaking about the uh, development strategy for the city of Moscow. I really enjoyed these words. I love my city, I love my district, and I love my street. So the Muscovites are, first of all, in the very center of the urban strategy, and the strategy is being developed on the different levels. This is, like, super important. Yes, please, take your turns. Don't wait for me. I'm Vladislav Butenko, and I'm in charge of the PCG, of the uh, in Price Waterhouse Coopers. I live in Moscow. I don't just come and go. And for me, the word which comes to my mind is like uh, the speed, because I can see the huge speed of changes. And we had been discussing with Marat. Uh, it's not only, you know, just from the top of our heads. The Moscow government uh, built this uh, headquarter, this instrument, which is not uh, the part of each city. It's quite unique for me. It's a speed of changes. And how you could do all of this in such a short period of time. Thank you. Um, so, what I find so impressive is the, the fine balance that uh, the city has achieved between uh, the development of infrastructure, uh, the needs of people for public open realm, the public open space, the public realm, and, and creating a sense of place. I think that's what's so important, is that balance that, uh, that, that they've achieved in the city. I think Moscow was always a very impressive city, but now it's both a humane and impressive city, and there's an enormous sense of pride that uh, permeates the evolution that's occurred over the last several decades. Uh, my impression is uh, uh, Moscow is changing very rapidly, but uh, everything that is all to the great heritage of Moscow. It's uh, important and the balance of heritage and change is very important. Bonjour, je m'appelle Patrick Collier, je suis le président de I am re representing the uh, greater Paris and oftentimes I come to Moscow. We discussed different issues with my colleagues, and uh, what I was impressed by is how rapidly the city is changing, and the speed of changing is uh, ensured by effective management in the city. Mm. Your ambition level is uh, is quite big. You, on one hand, you have ambition of uh, grand scale projects, and then you translate these projects down to the local level, and the cleanliness of Moscow streets. Uh, makes impression, especially for somebody who came from Paris. The contrast is there. It's obvious. And uh, I believe that I will bring back uh, many lessons uh, learned here in Moscow, and we are going to apply them in our greater Paris. Thank you. 
Uh, Marat, what will you say? What is your main impression of this city, of the city you live in? You know, my main idea is that Moscow is such a cluster, it's a bundle of energy. And I believe that in this energy, to be able to find a balance, balance uh, for all stakeholders uh, and the population being the first, and then uh, to count in the interest of the government, of, uh, of business, I think the, the most difficult part is to find this balance. Should we find this balance? And should these uh, energies of these three main stakeholders will be uh, not against one another, but will be like working as a whole, then uh, for sure we are doomed for success. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your comments and thank you for your impressions. So we are commencing the series of, uh, of short, about five-minute presentations. And I would kindly ask Mr. Kami, Tadal Kami, to answer the questions related to the uh, transport interchange hubs. What do you think are the key successful factors of the interchange hubs? How do they work in the city? How do they impact in the city? You have extensive experience. Please share with us. Uh, uh, may I use the uh, yes, sure. Ch uh, uh, slide changer controller? Thank you very much. Uh, I like to talk uh, this theme uh, from my experience of uh, transportation oriented development in Tokyo. Uh, uh, this is a uh, land price map of Tokyo. As uh, we can see on this map, there are uh, many areas in Tokyo where the land prices are as high as in central business district. This shows uh, that large-scale development and long-term vision has a significant impact on changing the monopolar structure of a city. Uh, I understand uh, Moscow is now shifting to uh, not monopolar, but uh, multipolar structure. I personally worked on redevelopment of Tokyo Station. Perhaps I can show you uh, some slides to explain the strategies we implemented. Uh, this is a uh, night view of uh, Tokyo EIS uh, development. Uh, the large membrane uh, roof is a new symbol of Tokyo Station. Uh, the project uh, site is located just uh, at the back side of Tokyo Station, known as a commercial district, YSC. Uh, as you see in this slide, uh, the yellow uh, part is our site, and the red uh, part is the old station. Uh, to make it realize, uh, uh, the uh, exceptional floor area ratio district system was used to reallocate uh, unused floor areas in Marnoch area for the construction of these new buildings, including the twin towers of Tokyo Station Yes Development Project. FAR uh, floor area ratio was increased up to 1,604%, uh, but also by securing the open space in the site. Uh, this is North Tower. And, and this is South Tower. Uh, these are connected by this uh, uh, ground roof. Uh, I'll explain the contrast of the two uh, sides of the station. The Marnoch side of the station is historical, solid, and grand. <coughs> we thought that the Yayas side should be futuristic, light, and comfortable. Thus, the clear contrast was produced. Also, the shape of the plaza has been improved, and it could hold several functions such as bus, terminal, taxi pool, and car drop-off. And uh, we also paid attention to utilize underground spaces to provide better connectivity and utilization of spaces. Tokyo Station area has over 100,000 square meters of well-utilized underground spaces and a network extending up to 800 meters connecting the buildings to the station. 
Uh, finally, uh, I'd like to explain so our uh, firm, Nikken. Uh, <coughs> Nikken was founded in 1900, having a history of nearly 120 years. Uh, Nikken is one of the oldest and longest multidisciplinary for, uh, architectural design firms in the world. Our headquarters offices in Tokyo, and we have several branches offices in the world. And I'd like to show you a selected overseas project. Uh, the left hand is the uh, new Camp Nou Stadium in Barcelona. Uh, we won the uh, world competition. And the right one is the uh, tower project in Dubai, uh, twin tower project in Dubai, which are under construction. Uh, this is my uh, presentation. Спасибо. My next uh, question to be to Mr. Sater. Mr. Sater, uh, Jeffrey, you have uh, a lot of experience in financing international mega projects worth of tens of, of uh, billions of dollars. Currently, Moscow is uh, doing unprecedented changes uh, which are taking place with a huge speed. Uh, we are implementing mega projects. This, the scope is big, the speed is big. What is your experience and uh, how uh, Moscow stands compared to other cities? Uh, maybe we should take into account some risks or any additional things uh, when we do these mega projects on such speed. Thank you. Well, firstly, um, Mr. Deputy Mayor and honored guests, thank you for inviting me. Uh, to participate in this dialogue. Um, and secondly, I'd like to apologize uh, because what I do is not quite as interesting as what many of my uh, colleagues on the, on the panel uh, do in, in that I look at the economics of development. I look at what and think about what happens behind, behind the facade uh, to make it all work as an integrated whole so that when the public uh, uses this infrastructure, they're not aware that, in fact, um, what goes into making it uh, work. Uh, as a bit, we have a, by way of a little bit of context, uh, my company, uh, WSP, we work in uh, a little over 45 countries, um, and we're in, involved in infrastructure in all sectors, although transportation comprises over 50% of our business. Um, over the last number of years, we've been involved in over 100 uh, public-private partnerships of major infrastructure with a value of well over $100 billion. Um, also for con context, uh, when we talk of infrastructure, uh, of infrastructure transactions, we're t typically talking about transactions that are well north of the $5 to $10 billion. Uh, so the risk inherent in these transactions are pretty profound. Um, they are extraordinarily high, and the impact exper is experienced over many, many years, uh, particularly considering the class of infrastructure is different to real estate. Uh, the investors in these uh, infrastructure transactions uh, are exposed to this risk um, uh, over a longer term. So Moscow um, is not particularly unique in the context that it's building a lot of infrastructure. Uh, but the scale of the infrastructure and the speed of the infrastructure that's being developed in Moscow is extraordinary. Um, the challenge that we have when attracting a private sector uh, investment in this infrastructure uh, through public-private partnerships is that Moscow is competing with other jurisdictions uh, around the world for these limited capital resources. Um, so some of the risk considerations, uh, all of these, different, these jurisdictions present different risks, um, and per either perceived or real. The fact of the matter is environment, uh, environment and social factors have for many years purportedly paid, played a role in this, uh, in the decisions, um, but in our experience, when a push comes to shove, when it comes down to investing, uh, the uh, financial reality, uh, when faced with the financial reality, and it comes down to uh, political considerations and uh, uh, stability of revenue in support of the debt. Um, 
typically governments carry out these socio-economic studies as a means uh, rather than an end. Um, and, uh, but from what I see, Moscow is, uh, has a strong economic bias in decision making. Um, the other I issue that we find is that uh, the these projects take many years to, um, to develop, many years to plan, and are typically uh, based on historic and legacy data. Uh, unfortunately or fortunately, the speed of, uh, of development of technology is extraordinarily rapid. Disruptive technologies have, have, <coughs> have an impact, and many of these projects, by the time they're built, um, are, are in fact uh, out of date and based on uh, outdated data. Um, the speed of, uh, of development in Moscow does to some extent mitigate that uh, fact. Uh, the West, uh, in the Western world is, is not building infrastructure unless uh, it does it with a PPP model, with a public-private partnership model. And what we're finding, in fact, is that traditional public-private partnership models are not resilient enough to deal with the mega projects uh, that uh, we need, we're seeing uh, happening in, uh, in cities. Um, put, put simply, we're finding that concessionaires are losing money on these big infrastructure projects. In the East, particularly in the developing world, we, uh, they, they're not building the infrastructure because they simply don't have enough money. We see Dhaka, we see uh, Jakarta. Uh, they're not able to attract the class one uh, developers and concessionaires, so they, they're not considering the value add factors, uh, which is very important in the environment. Um, so I'd say Moscow may well be ahead of its, uh, its uh, peer cities in the world. Uh, but certainly in line with uh, the, the great cities, Tel Aviv, Tokyo, Toronto, I have to put a plug for my city, uh, Paris and New York. Um, in terms of these uh, emerging uh, um, technologies, we've been working with Moss Trans Project uh, under the direction of the Deputy Mayor, uh, and they, we're looking at employing 6,000 new electric buses in the city, uh, the one thing that, that worries me as we work towards uh, developing a efficiencies and optimization of this implementation is, is there going to be sufficient uh, power and electricity generation to, d to support all of this new fleet uh, technology and all the new cars that are coming onto the road. So I know my time is up, so I'm going to wrap up to just to simply say I th do believe Moscow is ahead of its peers, health, safety, and security, its quality of life for its residents, accessibility. Uh, and as I've said before, Moscow has created a Moscow solution for Noasco, not a New York solution or, or Singapore solution or Dubai solution. It's a Moscow solution for Moscow, and I applaud you for that. Thank you very much. Mr. Seder, I have a very brief question to ask you. Please give me a very brief answer. You said that many projects, uh, large projects, were planned way before they were implemented using outdated data and technology. But imagine there were, there's a team behind a project. And once you understand that it's become outdated, do you destroy your project? Can you be trapped in this outdated technology? How do you deal with it? How do you overcome? Um, I, we've recently uh, completed a fairly large project in, in Canada. We developed that. Uh, I was initially engaged uh, to help the city in putting together the, the strategy for this project. This was in 2009. Uh, the project has just uh, been put out to tender. Um, 2019, it's 10 years. 10 years ago, we were not thinking of automated vehicles. We were not thinking of um, artificial intelligence to the extent that we're thinking about it today. And an awful large investment is going into uh, supporting this uh, development, which will be around and planned for the next 100 years. So to, uh, yes, I do believe that you, you do need to be flexible and nimble enough to make changes to these, these projects. Um, and I, I do believe that when uh, the, the way the city of Moscow is developing them, 
knowing what we're doing in the uh, electrification uh, model and knowing what we're doing with uh, transit-oriented development, um, that we need to be very nimble. We need to be prepared to make uh, big, bold changes to these plans and uh, to be able to execute on them fairly rapidly. Спасибо. Thank you. Mr. Severo, you are one of world leaders in TAR development, and Moscow authorities have been given a lot of attention to, to those transportation hubs. So how do you link transportation and other construction projects in the longer run? How can we approach that in a systemic way so as to achieve desired results? in a comprehensive manner. Yeah, I, I, I'm simply bowled over by the extensiveness of the metro rail system that's um, being built in Moscow. So uh, you have an unprecedented opportunities to treat this not as just a mobility investment, but as a way to restructure the growth of a city in ways that would be much more sustainable. Um, a couple of just thoughts I have as it relates to transit-oriented development in Moscow. Um, Everything I know and see shows that Moscow is a fairly congested city and the trains are full. I think it's critically important that future stations, TOD be thought as more than just tall buildings around stations. Particularly important is mixed land uses. Uh, the, you don't want to have a monocultural TOD where, a monofunctional TOD where it's just offices generating trips in the morning, in the evening, or housing. You want to mix uses so you're getting trips all days of the week, all hours of the day. You're really distributing the demand well. And you do it uh, not through employment and housing only. You put in entertainment centers and hospitals and um, schools and education centers that generate trips in the midday, evenings, and weekends. So the land use crit uh, chemistry, I think, is critically important, mixed land uses. Uh, another uh, important aspect of TOD is to think of it as not just nodes but corridors. Um, the, what's called the sweet spot for public transit when buses and trains grab a large share of trips or trips between roughly 5 to 15 kilometers. If it's shorter than that, you can walk or bike. If it's longer than that, there's too many stops to be made. So you need to have synergistic corridors, transit-oriented corridors, where people are making trips three or four stations down the line, not 18 stations down the line. And the way you do that is, again, put in the right mix and activities so you get very efficient bi-directional flow. The trains are, 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 and buses are full in both directions. So strategically thinking at a corridor level, roughly this natural travel shed of 5 to 15 kilometers, I think will make your transit investments much more sustainable. Um, I, I would also make the point that uh, transit-oriented development comes in many shapes and sizes. Um, you look around the world, uh, many cities that are doing TOD planning build typologies. Some stations are serving regional markets, some are serving districts, so their market sheds are fundamentally different. Or they have different real estate market conditions or different opportunity sites. So think of TOD less as kind of a manila envelope that you have a cookie cutter sort of pattern each and every station. There's a different type of TOD in different environments. Um, I think the best cities have really limited where they put public investments to leverage private TOD, uh, private housing and in, in uh, office development, and they do TOD well in a handful of stations instead of trying to do it everywhere. So think about types of TOD and building good prototypes. Um, two other points I would make about TOD in a city like Moscow um, is, um, you know, I, I think you've done a fairly good job from what I've seen within this five-minute walking catchment of your stations. You've got good access sheds, uh, pedestrian zones, good public civic spaces. But if you look at what's emerging, and I've seen it in Moscow, there's an explosive growth in bike, um, bike sharing, electric scooters. These vehicles that are not going just a three to five minute walk shed, they're going 10, uh, 10 minutes. So having these green perpendicular connectors 
that not only uh, serve pedestrians, but the, um, you know, the electric scooters and electric bikes. Uh, so, you know, really thinking strategically about unfolding mobility as a service, new mobility technologies, and doing your stationary planning within that geographic uh, domain. Uh, and the last point I would make is, and this is not a popular point to make, but it's so critically important. If you look at the most successful TODs worldwide, uh, they not only put in a lot of incentives to walk and use public transit in neighborhoods, but at the same time, they introduce restraints on the private automobile. Uh, you know, limits on parking, high parking charges, or at the extreme congestion charges. So, you know, if you do a lot of great development and people start riding trains, but you continue to underprice the car and, and parking of the car, those vacated roadway slots that traffic is moving better from transit-oriented development will quickly get filled up again. New automobile trips will be generated, people will shift time of day, or, or they've got out of public transit to start driving again, what we call induced travel demand. So, um, you know, it, you have to somewhat complement all of your transit incentives and TOD um, policies with some level of restraint and proper pricing of the automobile for this to really be successful. Спасибо. Мистер Перри, Мистер Перри, я have a to ask you. The member of the jury of the world's largest real estate exhibition, Moscow was awarded this year for Zarya, the park where this concert hall is located, and we're all very proud of it. I was proud to receive this prestigious award. So what can Moscow boast of globally? Sports facilities, its housing. What, are the, what is it we can be proud of globally? What do you think? What is our strong point? What, where, where are we at the cutting edge? Well, it's interesting you use this word pride, which was the one I used earlier. Um, I think that the transformation is what you can be most proud of over the last few decades. In 1988, I slept here. Well, actually, I slept in the Russia Hotel that was here. And, and I've been coming back every few years, and, and I've, I've really seen a, a remarkable transformation as as dramatic a transformation in many ways as places like Dubai, where I now live, um, or other cities in South Asia or China. But I think what's interesting here is that the transformation has been one that is, that is really about growing Moscow on its own terms and allowing it to evolve in its own terms with clear direction. <clears throat> so when we look at something like this park. <clears throat> Why is it so remarkable? There were many other short-term, perhaps economic reasons to do something else. That was not the route taken. But when you actually step back, you realize that perhaps economically this was the wisest thing to do. Because in a part of the city that didn't have any parks, this offers enormous value for the people who are not just residents in the region, but who are visiting. And of course, it's been very cleverly integrating many different elements, like this, this auditorium, that, uh, that bring people to the heart of the city and allow it to, to, in a sense, be as vibrant as possible. So there's a complementarity, and there's a wiseness in this decision-making process, which demonstrates a real maturity in, in thought and a very much human focus in the way things are being developed. So, of course, I was, I was very happy with the outcome of the, um, of the World Cup, being half French. Um, it was a perfect World Cup um, in many ways. But I have to say that what's most impressive is, of course, what, how people were greeted, how they felt when they, they came to Moscow. For so many of them, it was their first visit. It was really an eye-opener. I began my career back in the 1980s working on the Barcelona Olympics before we even knew we were going to have the Olympics. And it's often considered to be one of, have been one of the most effective Olympics in terms of the relationship between the event and the infrastructure and how the city was enhanced. 
And I can say that I feel very much the same spirit here in Moscow of, of excellence and determination to make things um, that, are, that are simply world class. Ultimately, you have to step back and say, these mega projects, they're not just the large symbolic projects, they're also the projects that have been discussed, for example, the, the treatment of streets throughout the city that people come in contact with day in, day out, and the quality of those streets has an enormous impact on the well-being of the population. Um, it's, it's absolutely appropriate that much of this Congress, this event, has been focused on, on health, health in cities, because ultimately cities are really built for humans. Uh, they may be also about economics, they may be about opportunity, but they really are to have an outcome that is a positive outcome for human beings. And I think that what you'll find over the next decade, as I've been studying this for cities all over the world, studied it in Tokyo, have studied it in the Middle East, have studied it in American cities, European cities like Barcelona, etc., is that you will see a real uptick in terms of longevity. You'll see a decrease over time of NCDs, non-communicable diseases, because you're creating an environment that engages people. So whether it is a symbolic structure or whether it is really working with the fabric of life of people, it is, in a sense, bringing those two things together in an appropriate way for the culture and the climate that allows you to create a place which is, uh, by definition, very livable and very attractive. And this is what is attracting people now to cities. Jobs are mobile now. The kinds of jobs you want to attract are extremely mobile. So you need to be sure that you're making a place that people really want to live in. And I can say I've seen in 30 years an amazing evolution where I think there's not a person up here on the stage that wouldn't be absolutely happy to live in Moscow today and for the future. So congratulations for that evolution. Thank you. Could you please say, uh, being the jury member of uh, MIPIM, you probably have been voting for Zaryadia projects, for Zaryadia Park. When it was your first time in Zaryadia, what was your most um, strong impression when you just came to this territory? What was your first impression when you uh, spent a night in the Rocio Hotel back then in the 90s or when you ended up in Zaryadia? What was your first impression here? Thank you. Of course. You know, I, I couldn't help but remember having been in the hotel, and, and it was, of course, a very kind of different philosophy of building. It was a different time. It was still uh, during the Soviet era. Um, my feeling was of enormous respect for the governance of the city, for the city fathers to actually say, this is what we need in this place. It is not about that short-term economic gain. It's about really making a place that's better for the people. Um, I think the, the sustainability dimension is so important in our cities today. Um, it really does, in a sense, echo the ecosystem that was here indigenously, and this is, this is an educational endeavor. And another thing that I found so impressive, which is so important and often overlooked in cities, is that this is a perfect place for every generation. Whether you're a child, whether you're elderly, this is a perfect place for interaction for generations. And, and this is something which we often uh, don't do well when we're doing monumental projects. They tend to cater to, to one audience or another. And this is really for everyone. So again, congratulations. Спасибо. So even it looks like not, it's not always about some tech, high tech uh, solutions, but about the environment, about the atmosphere and the feel that people have when they come to these kind of places. I have exactly the same impression. It's like for all ages. Uh, thank you. And my next question to Mr. Mistrale, Gerard Mistrale. The question for you is that uh, Moscow now is one of the fastest growing cities in the world. And indeed, 
Not so long ago, Moscow made it into this cohort of cities, speaking about the global cities and speaking about historical uh, span. So Moscow always needs uh, best practices, best international expertise, and uh, these best practices have to be adapted for the local realities because, like they say, think global, act local. We have to act local in Moscow. What do you think is the potential for development here in Moscow? And what kind of projects would help Moscow to achieve sustainable uh, level of uh, development? And quite possibly, maybe um, some other cities can learn from Moscow at this stage of its development. Thank you. Alors, uh, premièrement, uh, merci beaucoup. First of all, uh, thank you very much for the invitation to take part in this uh, discussion. I've been in Moscow uh, several times, and like like all the guests today, I was uh, impressed on a number of occasions of uh, how the uh, how big is the speed of changes. Moscow has its own specific vision, and the management which implements this vision is very smart. And this is the vision which has been promoted by Sergei Sabyanin, mayor of Moscow, by Marat Husnulin, uh, deputy mayor. And uh, the aspects of this video are um, necessary to make a progress in the shortest uh, time frame possible. As for the Moscow government, I would like to say that these are the people who are self-confident. Um, this is the uh, well-worked, uh, well uh, developed team working on different projects, and they combine uh, different uh, fields of expertise. They're thinking about um, thinking about not only Moscow as a whole, but about Moscow districts, and and they know what to do uh, to develop a megapolis. And I'm paying um, very big attention to um, to uh, comply with uh, sustainable development goals for megapolises. For over 20 years, I have been one of the leader of two companies, NG and Suez, which uh, are providing services to uh, the big cities, residents. And we are providing services uh, in 3,000 cities for 150 uh, million of people. And based on my experience, I can say that Moscow will not be successful unless it will comply these uh, sustainable development goals and will not be will not be driving sustainable agenda. But I would like to say that Moscow does comply with all these uh, rules and recommendations at the same time uh, continuing its development. As for the um, environment, Cities today um, are responsible for 80% of uh, pollution um, of the environment. It will be only win-win if the city will be able to pursue the low carbon agenda. And this is what is being done in Moscow about introducing electric uh, buses, electrical transport. We actually had been speaking about that yesterday. As for the sustainable development, we have to keep in mind that it um, relates to and to economic questions among other things. It's like a circular type of economy uh, or a cyclical economy. It's very important. And the city has to manage the issues of providing these uh, services, uh, such like water, uh, clean water. And also, we have to think about uh, sustaining our environment and making sure that our air is clean. And also the waste management, the waste has to be taken out of cities. And Suez, uh, among other things, is doing exactly that. There are some parallels which can be drawn to the projects of the uh, Great Paris. Not so uh, long ago, we had signed an agreement about cooperation with the Greater Moscow project, which is a huge project by itself. We are talking about 50 million cubic meters of uh, soil, which will be developed and taken out of um, c cities. And we will be replacing these obsolete areas and locations by the new construction projects. Will be will be taking out soils uh, from the open pits. And as for the other projects which are being undertaken in Moscow right now, we're also thinking about using these spaces which um, 
um, relate to the agreement signed uh, between Greater Moscow Project and uh, us within developing the underground metro network. As for the Moscow and uh, its uh, transportation ecosystem, I have to say that you have achieved uh, amazing uh, permeability uh, of this uh, transportation infrastructure thanks to tunnels, thanks to infrastructure projects, and you are carrying out uh, quite a big work in cleaning uh, contaminated soils uh, which has been taken out from Moscow. And this work has to be done within the public-private partnerships. And within these public-private uh, partnerships, uh, each uh, stakeholders have to clearly understand their role. The main role, of course, uh, belongs to the uh, city government. And uh, within the work of our organization, we could experiment a lot um, with 30, um, 30 megapolises we have been working in. We know that uh, the plan will be successful in so much as the uh, as the plan of the mayor and of the city management is strong. They have to understand what they want. And in Moscow, this is exactly the kind of vision. This is the vision of the city management, which correlates with the vision of the uh, senior management of the country. And uh, then we have to speak about making investments, about financing these projects. But all of this has to be mentioned by the uh, by the city mayor, it, mayor's office. So I'm absolutely convinced in uh, ability of the city of Moscow to continue its progression, its development, and eventually become the city of sustainable development to uh, expand its uh, public-private initiatives. Because we do realize that uh, in Moscow, we have a clear vision of what uh, changes have to be uh, implemented. Mr. Olier, Patrick Olier, uh, Mr. Mistrali has already touched upon the issue of uh, Greater Moscow project. And the Greater Moscow is indeed a mega, mega project because um, there, is a, there was a huge extension of Moscow territory. There is a great infrastructure work being done. But if you look at the uh, lessons of Greater Paris, how could you uh, coordinate, um, coordinate the construction between the central uh, part of the city and other uh, territories, maybe you could help us with uh, give, delivering some lessons that you've learned during the project. Thank you for the invitation of the management of the uh, uh, Greater uh, Paris to attend this forum. Uh, thank you, Marat, for um, for the chance to be here with you today. As for the Greater Moscow project, it's uh, first of all a territory where the polycentrical approaches will be utilized. Mr. Sobyanin and Mr. Kusnulin have always been emphasizing the need for polycentricity. And as for the crater Paris, uh, there are no like empty lots or free territory. It's more like uh, cooperation with, uh, with, um, with those who are building in the very high density area. We basically had to build uh, a new city out of several existing cities. We're also thinking more now about polycentricity. Uh, like in Moscow. And first of all, we uh, connect the future of the Greater Paris to developing transportation, to developing the TODs. And uh, we've been speaking a lot about TODs uh, now and yesterday. We are building new uh, metro stations. We will have 66 new stations in 200 kilometers of the new uh, underground lines. Of course, Moscow has a bigger length. But anyway, all of this creates new zones for development. When the metropolitan area expands, we have to think not only about the new lands, about the new project, but also about men and women who live in these uh, newly connected territories. Developing metro lines is done not for the sake of development per se, but to make sure that A, people would work closer to their housing, would spend less time uh, commuting, and of course, uh, we would pollute less. Several days ago, the mayor's office of Paris has adopted a very important uh, decision to equip the embankments of Siena to refurbish uh, these embankments from the automobile traffic. I'm always uh, following the MIPIM uh, awards and ceremonies. And when I realized that the city 
was awarded uh, for this kind of ecological projects, I decided to see what's the situation with ecological status. I realized that the nature came back to the city. Maybe agriculture will even ca come back to our cities. All of this um, enables us to maintain balance between the past and the future, between nature and human uh, settlements. Greater Paris um, has been in existence only for three years. Moscow, for that matter, is much longer. We have to share our uh, opinion and experiences. You, of course, have uh, one big advantage against uh, Greater Paris, that is of how you manage uh, um, Moscow extension. Mr. Mistral has been speaking about that, that uh, we in France have a lot of levels of powers, levels of authority, and sometimes there is an infighting and turf wars. So one uh, centralized management system is very beneficial to such projects. In Moscow, there is one centralized uh, structure of authority, and this is very important. As for um, the development principles, we have been working for three years. We've invested uh, 10 billions of private money into 80 uh, projects and mostly uh, mostly in 80 locations uh, which uh, comprise the Greater Paris. It's about rebuilding the court, living quarters, especially around the TODs and uh, interchange hubs, developing economy. We have all of these components. We really we really are placing the bet on the high-speed trains, commuter trains, and the new uh, metro stations. And again, we have 500 stops. Uh, stations uh, for for the bicycles. Uh, it's a V-Leap uh, project. It's about uh, developing uh, biking lanes, bike lanes, uh, something which was not the case uh, for Paris before. It's uh, very green transport, ecological transport. And by the way, we've pushed the car, uh, the automobile traffic, a little bit for the benefit of this uh, cycling yeah, movement. And uh, also, there was a quite a strong re negative reaction by the local population, which was explained by the, a lot of uh, works, construction works, which is being done at the same time. A lot of dugouts, a lot of uh, open pits in the city. We know how it feels. So this work has to be done uh, very fast on one hand. And again, democratic discussions of these issues with the local population is also very important. You've been saying that you do public hearings in different communities, which is very important. And by the way, these type of discussions have to be very regular, and each project has to be um, has to has to undergo public hearings in districts, in cities. As as am I as I'm concluding, I would like to say that the Greater pra, uh, Paris, this intermunicipal uh, unification, which has been in existence only for three years, we can learn something from Moscow. We learn how to do the work very fast, how to make projects a reality very quick, and we would like to take this courage from you because this courage is reflecting the vision at the, of the future. At the same time, this courage that you. Uh, with which you pursue your projects, opens up uh, gates for new technologies, for smart city technologies. I'm going to bring back uh, with me a lot of ideas back to Paris. And um, thanks to the mayor of Moscow, I will be um, using all of that. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I would like uh, to... to give the floor to Vladislav Butenko. And Vladislav uh, will tell us, I believe, um, very interesting outcomes of the research done by Boston Consulting Group. They've uh, done this research very recently, uh, challenges uh, to mega projects. And he uh, gave us a little preview about this research. And hopefully now he'll give us more information. Um, and uh, I'm hoping it will be very interesting to hear him how and in what way we can uh, use the outcomes of this research to make our development more balanced. Vladislav, uh, go ahead. Vladimir, thank you. Please give me the clicker for my uh, PPT. Thank you and good afternoon, dear colleagues. I am the head of the BCG, Global Practices, working with cities. Thank you. And I would like to express my gratitude to Marat Husnulin for the opportunity to uh, to do this very centralized research for the sake of this forum. The whole idea of um, comprehensive evaluations of impact of mega projects uh, uh, on the city residents is a unique thing. We haven't seen uh, such a work with cities before. We haven't dealt with uh, such uh, order with such a challenge which would be given to us. 
um, like let's consider how they impact people. On the yesterday's uh, plenary session, Sergei Sabyanin mentioned about some challenges which Moscow is facing currently. Any city is uh, having these challenges, and all the major uh, pro uh, cities uh, seem to be launching mega projects. But these mega projects are uh, successful to a different uh, degree. And I would like to begin by saying that uh, I want to give you five best uh, practices of the cities, and also five uh, best practices which other cities can learn from Moscow. And just to have a th 35, uh, hopefully, hopefully that the Moscow uh, residents will give us this high mark, uh, five is the best in Russia, uh, for implementing these projects. So what are these uh, best practices? The best cities, well, first of all, Andrei Sharonov yesterday um, said very interesting thing. He said uh, that the previous development paradigm was, OK, you develop economy and people will come. Now the paradigm is totally different. You first have to ensure the comfort best people come in this very comfortable environment, and they will build you up your economy. We think that you have to do both, uh, the first and the second. Uh, the second idea. In the PCG, we've approached um, Resident-centric, resident-centric uh, city, which means that the city has to set a goal not only to increase the level of satisfactions of the residents, but also make sure that the these residents would recommend their city to other people. Thirdly, Maslow, Abraham Maslow pyramid uh, for the city. I will mention about that a little bit later. Fourthly, to achieve this type of loyalty by residents uh, for the city to be recommended. When making decisions, you have to look um, at the mega project through the eyes of the local residents. And fifthly, to make strategic decision and tactical ones uh, based on micro data. Uh, just average aggregated data does not work simply because the average, you know, data all over the city is difficult because the uh, cities are slowly evolving organism. And you have and can work only based on the micro data. That's our recommendation. Several illustrations of uh, this slide. Uh, what I like about this slide, uh, not the left and the right, but the middle one. The middle one says nothing changed. It's a survey uh, of the satisfaction level in the European cities. Uh, left is uh, my satisfaction improved, the right one decreased, and middle one didn't change. You either increase it or it decreases automatically, or vice versa. You cannot have the satisfaction level um, as an agenda of the managerial team. So this is Maslow pyramid referred to. Let's go bottom up. It starts with basic infrastructure services. People need to have jobs, roofs, social services, and after all of that is taken care of, we're moving up to the next level, high quality urban services. The third level has to do with your spare time, people around you, and environment. And top level is engagement. People must be proud of their city and feel ownership for the city. And now a few questions that something our guests could take home. What I think is important is to be bold, and Mr. Olya spoke about it, and set forth a goal, a vision, Mr. Mr. Olya spoke about it, to become a residence-centric city, which Moscow definitely is. Secondly, compare yourself against other cities. Learn from best practices, and this forum is a place where this comparison takes place. Third, mega projects must be of different types. Some uh, must help districts that are lagging behind catch up. But there should be other problem projects as well, such as that idea that will set new standards. Fourth, away from average. Marat Husnulin said that there are different scales of projects, larger, smaller, micro level, based on peculiarities of every district. And there are management mechanisms that allow to achieve pace of change that you need. Well, take Moscow Central Circle. We're now in Zaretia, which sets a new standard. While Moscow Central Circle is the one that helps districts to catch up. The number of 
uh, rented offices doubled. But then the, the proximity of Moscow Central Circle stations, I look at a different example, Moscow Central diameters, it's also a catching up project. If in the past, during rush hour, you were 30% of Moscovites had to travel standing in public transport. Now, people don't. 0% have to travel for 40 minutes, which is the average commute, standing. This is an interesting slide. We like matrices in ECG. We have 146 districts in Moscow. So, vertical line is quality, uh, and horizontal is perception. So, upper right, upper lower uh, left, upper left corner is what confuses me. Well, a lot has been done, but it's underappreciated by people. So, this apparently represents problems with keeping people aware. And here again, we see all districts of Moscow ranked by economic diversity, which is a very good criteria that allows you to judge on economic growth. So you see these districts that are diverse already, they grow faster than others. And there's risk that the best will grow faster and uh, worse will fall behind. But that's also an opportunity. You need to give them additional support, which brings me to the five things I would recommend Moscow authorities to look at once they implement further mega projects. Continue focusing on balanced development, make it people-centric, look at specific needs of people, not just increase uh, kilometers of roads per se. Make Moscow a more active city. Make districts compete for loyalty of citizens. Look through people's eyes at all managerial decisions. And then, and that's also very important, create demand for further mega projects. I want to end with this quote, which I think mm, reflects what we all think. And it's Sergei Sabanian's quote. He said, we need to make sure that we create a comfortable environment for every Moscovite. And this is what we're all working on. Thank you. Sergei Semenovich also said, peripheries should become center or similar to center in terms of quality of life. Let me end with a very brief question. Vladislav just gave his advice based on BCG research, but I would like to ask all participants to give their advice to Moscow. You're all people of a lot of experience. And I'm sure you have something to say. What would you advise Moscow in terms of its future development? Just very briefly, 20 to 30 seconds. I suggest we, well, whoever's willing, whoever's willing may start. Go ahead, please. Mr. Mr. Ali, go ahead. Well, I would advise to Moscow authorities and municipal authorities to continue trying to combine social dimension, climate dimension, and cultural dimension. These three points, this would be my advice. Thank you for this advice. Well, Vladislav gave his advice already. Mr. Seder. Very small one. Uh, Moscow has been very successful in delivering a sustainable and resilient city. Its uh, economic, financial, social, environmental uh, focus. Uh, but a colleague of mine this morning mentioned something that I thought was quite insightful. Um, it's, it's all been about what the city does for its population. And perhaps this is at one stage where the population can contribute to this. 
and that's in the form of urban farming and uh, rooftop farming. Thank you for that. Mr. Perry. I'd actually like to expand on that idea because one of the most important things for people to feel that is their community is for them to actually have what we call skin in the game. And I've found very effective on some of the larger projects I've done um, throughout the world and some not so far from Russia to actually organize that citizens will complete a street with professionals naming trees after children uh, of the neighborhood, etc., but really giving them a kind of personal engagement with the enhancement of their environment. So it's not just because I can afford to be there, it's because I've been part of creating that place. Thank you. Mr. Camille. As uh, to Moscow, as Moscow should uh, appear more uh, to all over the world, more information to the world. And then I think the inter more interaction happens between Moscow and the world, and it leads to the next stage of development. That's my advice. Спасибо. Well, I would advise to, I would advise to Moscow to continue striking balance between pace of change and day-to-day -day life of citizens and remember nature nature in city Marat Husnolin we're about to join the session so I would like to ask you to comment and give your advice your opinion thank you very much this year well host in this ninth urban forum and we see how this event evolves one point i want to make all mega projects i spoke about today that are being implemented in moscow all ideas all suggestions all modalities are based on other cities and countries experience very much thanks to experts that came to visit moscow that we visited all over the world. And I can comment on advice that were given, for instance, the one given by Gerard Mestrelli. I met him a few years ago, and I was amazed by the scale of work he does in terms of urban planning. It was thanks to him that we understood that industrial waste Construction waste is a terrible problem for cities. This is something that was not in our agenda before that. And the fact that he spoke about it, that we need to work on that, on climate change, on global warming, it's valuable thanks to him, thanks to his companies that we became aware of the problem and started working on it in Moscow. When we spoke about TODs, I said that 11 years ago, Eleven years ago, we've n we had no idea what that is. We lacked competences. That has never happened in Moscow. Uh, the square of three big railway stations is the largest hub we have. Three big railway stations uh, in the center of Moscow. But when I came on invitation on our partners, I looked at uh, state-of-the-art TOD, I understood it's not just about transport. It's a new way of life. It's a place for residential construction, for offices, for cultural, recreational facilities. And this is what we're trying to do with our TODs. We try to make them as multifunctional as possible and make them very different. I enjoyed Mr. Sader's proposal very much, who has very much experience in infrastructure projects. We are trying to attract investors. We understand that we will not be able to finance this huge volume of work through public money. So we do invest in infrastructure, but we need uh, at least three rubles per each rubble invested by the state coming from 
private sources because land prices go up, real estate prices go up, tax revenues go up. There's a true explosion of revenues related to transport infrastructure development. We, we sensed it, and with your help, we started moving in that direction, and now we've moved to a new level where we need international investors. We're trying to structure it differently. We're trying to invest, to attract investors to this field, and we're ready to cooperate. I'm very much interested in American development, experience of city development, development of transportation system. For many years, we considered how to do that. We invited Professor Vucek, who told us about his approach to the development of public transport. We analyzed his proposals, and right now we think we need to stress public transport. But again, we came up with our own solution. We're building a lot of new railway stations. We're integrating subway and railroads. And I thank colleagues for their words that we need to raise awareness about Moscow's experience. And it's a very good advice we'll take. I liked the idea about horticulture, about city gardening. By the way, Moscow is unique in very many ways. Twelve and a half million Moscovites have six million little gardens outside of Moscow. Six million little gardens. And that creates a huge problem of weekend traffic. We have five million cars in the city. Two and a half are out on roads every day. But on Friday, another million cars go outside Moscow to those country houses, dachas. But the idea of creating gardens on roofs or allocating additional plots of land, why not on TODs? By the way, yesterday when I was talking with Mayor, one of the speakers said uh, oh, plant vegetables on rooftops of TODs. By the way, Mayor liked it, and he said, let's choose a TOD where we're going to do this urban gardening. So we will take that on board, and thank you for this suggestion. I also appreciate a lot the idea of this communication with nature. Just yesterday, after the final plenary ended, I met young architects, people that uh, got a grant scholarship in Barcelona, and they came bringing new ideas. And one of those young architects yesterday spoke about creating an app where you can name every tree in every park so that a person when he comes to the park he could identify trees by names so imagine you're an architect that are just graduating they are thinking they're like-minded they, they think just like you and it's good we have creative talented young people and we'll make all that happen And I like Mr. Olya's advice. I want to highlight it specifically. We need to talk to people more. We need to raise awareness. But thanks to Greater Paris, Greater Moscow came to being. Once we heard about this idea of Greater Paris back in 2011, consulted with Mary, and we decided we need to develop Moscow. And thanks to Maurice Leroy, who was minister of Greater Paris back then and who is now a member of our team, that we came up with the idea of Greater Moscow, and this project has proven to be economically viable. In conclusion, I want to thank BCG, because they did this very interesting research. He wasn't given a lot of time, but still, an interesting fact we heard from the research was that over 60% of people that live in cities, Moscow in particular, are already today ready to recommend their district to friends. That means we're 60% done with 
this task, 60% of Moscovite supporters, and our goal is to raise this indicator further. We will communicate with Moscovite. We're introducing new procedures such as electronic vote. We're discussing projects, electronic complaints. Do you know that every Friday, mayor has this big meeting where he considers complaints by common people. I manage a huge construction industry. We have 800,000 construction workers in Moscow. You know what I get punished for? If, for instance, uh, someone complains that on a construction site, uh, a construction vehicle leaves dirt on roads because the wheels were not washed, or that a road was constructed badly, and a mayor keeps track of such complaints, and he criticizes authorities of districts. And this is an example of dialogue between authorities and people. It's it's not always easy, it's not always uh, pleasant, but that's what we do. Uh, we'll be doing 85 public hearings on renovation program. Uh, we did uh, six and got 150,000 suggestions. We responded each and every one of them, and we told people what could be incorporated and what could not be incorporated. So we are in dialogue with common people, and it's a very important advice. Something we'll continue doing further. And in conclusion, I would like to once again thank all of our colleagues, because people that are present here, they're all very well accomplished in their respective field, busy people, and we appreciate that you found time in your busy schedule to visit Moscow. And that means that what we do matters. So I thank you all. I thank you on my own behalf, on behalf of Moscow Mayor, with this, we adjourn this meeting. Thank you.